Lovely. Lovely. So we're here with uh, Pocket Road or Polly and uh, Rosie's new horse. Um, so Rosie, tell us about Polly. Well, she's five at the moment um, and she's an um, uh, off the track thoroughbred mare. Um, he, she finished her, her race training in like May um, and she's been with Alfie mm. Marshall um, for retraining and he's an inventor so yeah. Hopefully next year you get out and do a few small competitions, a few like maybe some ADUs. Um, when you tried her, what did you like about her? Um, well she was like, she was definitely not the typical chestnut mare um, and she, I just got on her and she was just very easy to ride. Yeah, and she just had a really nice sort of rhythm to her canter, um, which I thought would be quite nice around the show jumping course or something. So, yeah. Yeah. so um, Jason, you're always on about green and green doesn't mix. So why have you <laughs> let your daughter go and buy a green thoroughbred off the track? This this is a good question, to be fair. You always do your research. The people that I, or that we bought Polly from, are uh, very good reputation, known them for quite a while. I've helped them with some of their own horses. And uh, they they said she was a really genuine mare, although, although young. We, we had a little trial, we had a ride, and we did test her. I said, well, let, let's go down on the field and there's a couple of jumps there she'd never seen before and a few little obstacles around and she just did it all without question. Thoroughbreds, you know, some people think that they can be a bit scatty and and a bit hard to, to train, but if you get a good thoroughbred, they are amazing. So I think we've got one. <laughs> if um, people out there are getting a thoroughbred off the track, you've mentioned a couple of things that you would look for. Um, so if they've had some retraining, go to um, someone who's reputable, um, who you know does a good job with the retraining and what else are you specifically looking for? You've mentioned temperament, obviously. Mm. Um, well, temperament, again, you can't state that enough. And and a lot of people make a mistake of going in to see a thoroughbred. I mean, she's very lean and that's something else to be said. When you see a racehorse off the track, especially if they stop racing, sometimes when they let down, they actually start to look worse because they don't really fill up. They lose that sort of racing muscle <clears throat> and everything's got to settle down before they build up again. And I think she's in that process. So confirmation wise, I like a horse to have good feet, which she has. Um, as you can see, no, no cracks. They're coming down at a good angle. Uh, you know, we've had a vetted and she's, she, there's, there's no problems with her joints. Like with all horses, when you're buying horses, you've, you've got to like them. And there was something about the look of her eye. You know, I always look at their face. And I, I, I do like a good eye on a horse. It's something that I really... <laughs> she looks like she's going she to sleep like at the moment. Going to to sleep. But she had a... So when you first get a new horse, what are the, um, what are the kind of checks um, to think about? I mean, we've sent off um, poo samples to Westgate Labs to just check her worming. She did come wormed, so that, that's good. So we're checking that. Um, the saddle, what are we doing with the saddle, Rosie? We're waiting a little bit for her to put on a bit of muscle before we get one fitted. Yeah, we're just going to wait till she's got a bit more condition. In, in, the, yeah. in the meantime, we're... We've got a riser. Yeah, we're using pro lights and, and a nice thick saddle blanket just to to make sure the saddle sits above the wither and that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, there's there's not that much of Rosie, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and don't forget the teeth as well, really important. In terms of um, bridal and bits, Rosie, what's the go? Um, so at the moment, we're, we're again doing the same sort of thing with um, the saddle. We've got a little, um, just a very plain bridle with no nose band and a drop cheek snaffle, I think it's called. Um, and then soon enough, we'll get a quantum bridle. We just need to get it fitted. We might get Jill in, Jill Bat in, to give us a bit of advice on bitting. Earlier today, we had uh, Abby from Saracen Horse Feeds coming out to do a bit of a body condition check and give us some advice on feeding. But along with her feed, we will be giving um, Equine Exceeds Gastro Pro. So Jace, you tend to give that to a lot of young horses that come onto the yard, don't you? Yeah, I, but particularly horses that are a little bit stressy or for her, she's not exactly a stressy horse, but she has come from an environment where she's been fed a lot of hard feed, probably stabled a lot. Uh, but it is definitely worth um, checking checking that and using uh, Gastro Pro is a great, great thing. We, we do a lot, use a lot of it. And we've kind of came up with a bit of a routine for her. Lunch her twice a week and and sort of include trot poles, walk poles, and just get her using her neck a bit more. Um, and then t um, hack her twice a week, just lightly, not doing anything too much, and maybe have a little jump here and there just to keep her in shape. So. And looking forward to a lesson with um, Millie Kruger, Camilla Kruger, um, on Friday, and she's going to give us a few exercises um, to start using her back and working on that um, top line. So we're really lucky to have Abby Turner from Saracen who comes onto the yard and gives us lots of advice. Um, so she's just come out and looked at Polly for us. And um, yeah, so what kind of condition would you say she's in? Um, well, obviously she's, um, she's quite light. Um, she's come off the track, I think, in spring this year, didn't she? So she hasn't done much since then. Um, just looking at her overall body condition, um, obviously, yeah, she is a little bit light. I can feel the ribs as well as see them. Um, so she's got a little bit of coverage to put on over her ribs and over her hindquarters. Um, she is lacking quite a lot of top line, so that will make her look slightly lighter than she actually is. Um, so at the moment, I body conditions for her um, a score four, um, which is just under where you'd want her to be. Ideally, we'd like her to be a five. So. As soon as we can, we will um, try and cover those ribs with her forage um, and her hard feed and her grazing as well. So, so. the body conditioning score, yeah. is that out of 10 or is it out of yes. some score out yeah. of 5? Yeah, it? so there's um, there's two body condition scoring charts. There's um, 1 to 5, so 1 being really skinny um, and then 5 being morbidly obese. Um, we tend to use the 1 to 9, well I use that one anyway, just because you've got a little bit more to work with. So one being completely emaciated, um, five being ideal, and then nine being immorbidly obese. Right. Um, so yeah, six would be uh, a little bit fleshy, um, seven would be uh, moderately fleshy. So seven very fleshy. would probably <laughs> be like frogged yeah. is at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, five is where we'd like them to be. Um, typically your uh, race horses will be more on the four, um, as well as your sort of three, four star event horses towards the end of the season. Um, but ideally we look at a five. So you basically want to be able to feel the ribs, but not see them. Um, you've got the nuchal ligament that runs from the pole down to the withers, and it feels like a bit of a rope inside of the neck. You want to be able to feel that. Um, and anything on top of that, we would class as fat and anything to the side would be muscle. So obviously um, Polly here hasn't got very much sitting on there at all. In fact, there's just literally skin on top of her oh, at the moment. Oh, um, so she's got a lot of muscle to build, um, which can make a difference to how she might look from the side. But actually, um, for where she is at the moment, I'd be quite happy um, with the weight that she has gained over the last few months. Um, and it's a very, very slow process with your mm -hmm. um, thoroughbred X racer type horses anyway. Perfect. So. Your advice for her feeding regime yeah. um, for now, for the next uh, two or three months while we head into winter? Yes, so um, first of all, as always, forage first. So we always look at how much fibre they're having. Um, ideally, we'd like her to have ad lib forage. Um, and that would be two to three percent of her body weight. Um, 
so well, I'm sure at some point we will weigh Polly and see um, see how much she weighs, but I would imagine she's about 400, um, maybe even less than that at the moment. That's where we'd like her to be. Um, so we would want her to have on two to three percent of her body weight, um, a minimum 10 kilos over a 24 hour period. So that's including your, your hay or your haylage and your pasture. So um, we would work towards that for her. If she's having anything less than that at the moment, um, then we would look at forage replacing her. Um, so we would give some um, different types of fibre chops um, and also some mashes as well, just to get that fibre intake in there, especially as we're going into the winter. Um, and then in terms of hard feed, we want to look at something that's relatively low in sugar and starch. Um, typically, some X-ray sources can be um, a little bit more highly strung um, or have that sort of fizzy temperament. So we don't want to exacerbate that um, regardless of their sort of temperament at the moment. And um, we want to keep it nice and simple, high in fiber, um, as I said, low in sugar and starch. Um, so at the moment she's, um, she's been on our super fiber keeps um, and that has just sort of topped her up over the summer months. Um, but because she is uh, slightly lean going into the winter, we're going to up her onto the Saracen Relieve cubes. Um, the relief cubes are uh, much higher in oil, and so that will help with covering um, over, her, uh, over her ribs and her hindquarters, and also slightly higher in protein and quality protein as well to help with that muscle development as she does a little bit more work with Rosie over that, um, over that winter period. Um, so that should keep her um, nice and happy um, from a temperament point of view, um, but also just give her slightly more coverage as well. Perfect. So, and um, we all know that X racers or racehorses yeah. or, or those that have been stabled a lot, um, yeah. they can have a tendency to, for ulcers. Yeah. You had a couple of really good tips for yeah. that. Yeah, um, so first thing I would say um, about gastric ulcers is we can help um, prevent them from, from coming back. But in terms of the actual ulceration in the stomach, um, if you do think a horse has got ulcers, the best thing to do would be to get them scoped um, to find out what grade they are and where they are in the stomach and um, get the treatment that is um, subscribed by your vet. Some strategies to help if you do think your horse has got ulcers would be to feed um, a large round stub scoop, a heaped stub scoop of um, chaff before 30 minutes before riding and basically that just helps um, to soak up all of the gastric acid that might be sitting in the stomach. Uh, you can also um, make obviously making sure that your sugars and starch levels are um, lower in the and um, in the hard feeds that you're feeding. Um, and then another tip would be to um, use some corn oil in your feed. So that's um, basically corn oil produces a hormone um, which basically increases the blood flow around the stomach and that helps with the lining of the stomach and making sure that there's sort of an extra layer in the bottom of that stomach um, and that's 40 mils in the morning and 40 mils um, in the evening feed and you should do that over a course of six weeks um, and that has proven um, to really help as well. And the last little thing that we noticed with Polly, um, she doesn't mm -hmm. win suck or crib or anything like that but um, just literally in the last two days, she seems to have taken a liking to the fence on our gate. And okay. she's actually just <laughs> bitten off um, some chunks of it and just stands there chewing yeah. um, chewing the wood yeah. um, in her field. So it's not, okay. I don't think it's a, a habit or anything like that. She yeah. just, it's literally yeah. that sort of, that gate. Yeah. So okay. is that a, unusual or usual? Um, it's not unusual, um, but it does, um, yeah, it, it does happen occasionally and it can, um, it can happen for various reasons. Sometimes it purely can just be boredom. Um, he, uh, she might just like the taste of the fence. <laughs> um, sometimes it could be um, that they're lacking vitamins and minerals, um, sometimes lacking fiber. Um, so again, similar to sort of what we would do with forage is if your horse is maybe a little bit bored of the forage that they've got and then they start chewing other different bits of um, materials like wood. Um, I would suggest, again, just giving them an extra source of forage, so maybe putting some hay in the field or again, using a soft fibre chop for them to chew on. Um, the other thing uh, that you can do is, again, just making sure that your horse has got a balanced diet so that they've got all of their vitamins and minerals and quality proteins in there. 
Um, and also feeding table salt within their hard feed on a daily basis. So that can just be from the supermarket. Um, it's a really cheap way to just make sure that they've got some of those salts going um, back into their body that they lose from exercise. Um, and it also helps to uh, instigate thirst response. So from a dehydration point of view, um, it will really help to just make them drink a little bit more. Um, so yeah, once horses are um, uh, dehydrated, they don't have a thirst response. So that just helps to, to get that back in there. Um, without them having to drink salty water so yeah, <laughs> yeah. amazing god so many tips so um, obviously Polly's really new to us so she's only been with us a couple of weeks um, so we're going to be following her progress with all those uh, feeding tips and um, yeah hopefully in two or three months time you'll see uh, a slight change <laughs> in her shape perfect yeah. thanks a lot Abby you're welcome yeah.